Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now there was a time when MediaTek focused on mid-range and level entry processors. Well, since the Dimensity 1200, those kind of days have been disappearing fast in the rear view mirror. And now with the launch of the Dimensity 9000, uh, MediaTek are squarely aiming for that flagship processor segment. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the MediaTek 9000 is squarely aimed at the best of what Samsung can offer, the best of what Qualcomm can offer, and now MediaTek are part of the Cortex-X program, which means we've got here a new processor with the Cortex-X2 CPU core from ARM. So the prime core is the X2 clocked at 3.0505 gigahertz, and this is then supported by three performance cores, Cortex A710, clocked at 2.85 gigahertz. And then for the efficiency cores, you've got the Cortex A510 at 1.8 gigahertz. So a couple of things to mention here. First of all, these are ARM V9 processors. So this is the first, as far as I know, a company to announce ARM V9 processors officially. Of course, we were expecting it because the 710, because the X2 are ARM V9. And I have videos here on this channel about those CPU designs and about ARM V9. And the second point is that we are seeing the one plus three plus four setup that we have seen from Qualcomm and from Samsung. So you've got the prime core, in this case, the X2, and then you've got three high performance cores, and then you've got four power efficiency cores. And then rounding off the whole package, you have a 10 core Mali G710. You've got eight megabytes of L3 cache, quite an impressive number there, and six megabytes of system level cache. So MediaTek certainly understanding that good levels of caching at both a system level and an L3 level will really help the performance. And the other headline about this processor is it's built on a four nanometer process. So what does that mean? That nanometer number, most devices for last year were built on five nanometer, actually tells you about the transistor density. And I have other videos here on this channel if you want to understand more about that. Now TSMC's four nanometer process isn't a full node. We're waiting for three nanometers, where the idea is that you can kind of almost, we hope, double the transistor density. Four nanometers is a step on the way, and really it's just an improvement of the existing five nanometer process. When I say just, you understand if you've watched my videos about how complicated it is to make these uh, processes, you'll understand that that is a complete understatement. But we've gone from five nanometers to four nanometers, which means they've increased slightly the transistor density. That also helps with uh, things like the speed and the heat, which is why we're seeing here, this is clocked at over three gigahertz. Now, MediaTek are saying that the X2 core clocked at 3.05 gigahertz is 35% faster and 37% more power efficient than a Cortex X1 core built on a five nanometer process and clocked at a slightly lower frequency. Now, when we get to the GPU, we've got this 10 core Mali G710 GPU. And look at this for amazing figures. MediaTek are saying that it is 35% faster than the GPU you get in the Snapdragon 888 and 60% more power efficient than what you get in the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. Now that is an absolutely amazing statement and of course we'll have to check that when the devices are actually launched but it seems they're very confident about the power of the Mali G710 and what it can achieve inside of their new processor. MediaTek also support the ray tracing API that's now part of the Vulkan uh, graphics API. It's software only at the moment, of course, using the GPU, uh, but the ray tracing part is mainly done in software. The drivers handle it. There are no announcements yet about which actual games are gonna be using it. However, this is an interesting step forward where we slowly start to see the trickle down of ray tracing technology into the mobile space. Now, when it comes to connectivity, we've got Wi-Fi 6E. Again, I've got videos here on this channel about what Wi-Fi 6 is. And in this case, it's the one that's using the six gigahertz uh, frequency band. Of course, it still supports normal Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 4 and so on, up to 160 megahertz channel widths there. Again, look at my other videos on Wi-Fi to understand what that means. And we've got Bluetooth 5.3, which means it's ready for LE audio when that technology really does finally take up mass adoption. 
And the Dimensity 9000 also has the MediaTek fifth generation APU. Here they're quoting four performance cores, two flexible cores, giving a 400% boost in performance compared to the third generation and a 400% boost in power efficiency compared to the third generation. And it will be interesting to see what apps MediaTek are able to release. It takes the full power of that new APU. And so there you have it, a real competitor for Samsung and for uh, Qualcomm in the flagship space. It will be interesting to see when it comes out, the performance compared to the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100, but also to what Samsung and Qualcomm will be launching as well. Talking of launching, we're going to see phones with this device in it sometime late Q1, early Q2 of 2022. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com. Type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. 9,000!